Good Tuesday morning. I'm Father Stephen St. Bridges Hermitage, and this is Moments with the Master. Today is the 28th day of February, 2023. We've just completed our first week of Lent, and I hope it's been a blessing. I hope this coming week is going to be even more amazing. You know, folks, I hope that each and every one of you is using these 40 days to draw closer to the Lord, renewing your prayer life, your scripture reading, hopefully a great Lenten reflection. All those things, folks, all those things to make you a better version of yourself. Today, today our reading comes from Isaiah chapter 55, verses 10 and 11, Psalms 34, and also the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 6, verses 7 through 15. And I'm going to read a little bit of that to start my reflection today. Verses 14 and 15 in Matthew. If you forgive others their transgressions, your Heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will I, your Father forgive your transgression. In the Amplified Bible it reads, For if you forgive people who trespass their reckless and willful sins, leaving them, letting them go, giving up resentment, your Heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, their reckless and willful sins, leaving them, letting them go, and giving up resentment, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. It's all about forgiveness, folks. Because the definition of forgiveness is essentially the act of pardoning the offender. In the scriptures, the Greek word for uh, translated for forgiveness literally means to let it go. I know that's easier said than done. We're always saying, that, well, just let it go. And I always tell you, sometimes we have to work on it. We have to work through it. But forgiveness, it's like a person that owes you money and you let it go. You say, that's fine. You don't have to pay me back. You know, the debt's, the debt's clear. Well, Jesus uses this. Uh, we can compare that to the parable of the uh, the unmerciful slave in, in Matthew, uh, the 18th chapter. Folks, it's letting things go. You know, but how do we achieve this letting go? Like I said, I understand it's not always easy. You know, it's, sometimes it's, it feels like an impossible task. No matter how much we want to, our emotions get in the way in usually unexpected times. Memories pop up, you know, and then we get angry and then we feel the pain. You know, in our own strength, forgiving the way the Lord forgives us is impossible. It seems like an impossible task. But remember this, folks, nothing's impossible with our Lord, nothing. And with the Holy Spirit guiding us, living within us, we can go through the process that leads us to true forgiveness. You know, we're taught that unselfish love is based in forgiveness. We read in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 5, to keep no record of wrongs. Forgiving others means letting go of resentment, giving up claims, you know, comp compensated, even giving up the hurt and the loss. I know it's painful, folks. It really is. But remember, forgiveness is the very heart of the gospel. In Colossians 3.13, we read, Bearing with one another, and if one has complaints against the another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you. So you also must forgive. That even means forgiving yourself. Many folks have a hard time with that single issue. It holds them it holds them hostage. It holds them back from enjoying all that the Lord has, all that God has to, to give to them. That's where I'm going at with, with this reflection, folks. Uh, you thought I was talking about forgiving others, and we should. But sometimes our biggest problem is forgiving ourselves. And God wants us to forgive ourselves. Not that we have the 
ability or the authority to pardon ourselves. You know, we've already asked the Lord for that. And he's forgiven. And we have to accept that. Pastor Chuck Swindoll writes, By focusing on forgiving ourselves, we have taken the spotlight off of God and pointed it at us, making it doubly difficult to let go of our sins. He has forgiven us. We must simply receive that forgiveness and rest in it. It means releasing those sins we want to hold on to, refusing to revisit them in our minds and allowing the truth of our forgiveness to cover us in his peace. Absolution from the Lord is far more powerful than absolution from ourselves. In the Amplified, we read in 1 John chapter 2, verse 1, My little children, I write to you these things so that you may not violate God's law and sin. But if anyone should sin, we have an advocate, one who will intercede for us with the Father. It is Jesus Christ, the all-righteous, upright, just, who conforms to the Father's will in every purpose, thought, and action. Really, it comes down to, folks, every sin, all the sins that each and every one of us have ever done, have, have ever, ever, ever going to do, all the screw-ups, all the mistakes, all the issues, can't destroy God's love for us or his interest in us. Jesus is, Christ is our advocate. It's, it's not about us, folks. It's about Christ. We, we have to put the focus where it belongs. It's all about Christ. Ultimately, refusing to forgive, our, forgive ourselves is prideful. It, there's no really other way to say it. It's, it's making ourselves and our sins bigger than God and God's grace. And Folks, that's a that's a failure out of the gate. It's about God, His grace, and His forgiveness. We are not bigger than God. What have I told you a bunch of times on this on these videos? God loves you. Creator of the universe wants to be your friend, wants to hold your hand. So knowing that, you can forgive yourself might take a little bit of work. I understand that. But you're not, your sin, you and your sins aren't bigger than God. Author Tim Kelly writes uh, in his book, Counterfeit Gods, when people say, I know God forgives me, but I can't forgive myself, they mean they have failed an idol whose approval is more important than God's. The great Christian writer C.S. Lewis, Lewis expresses a similar sentiment in one of his letters. Here, I quote him, and he says, I think that if God forgives us, we must forgive ourselves. Otherwise, it is almost like setting ourselves up as a higher tribunal than him. It's about God. It's about his forgiveness. Let go. Let God accept what he has to offer us. I know it's not easy. He's always got a couple tips here. First tip is believe Christ and meditate on the scriptures. Accept God's promise and eventually, eventually, God will change how you feel. You were forgiven, even if you don't forgive it, even if you don't feel it. But until you do, remember, it's about God. Second, don't trust your intellect. Don't don't lean on your own understandings. And, and and Lord knows we don't want to trust our emotions, especially if any of those contradict the word of God. Don't trust anything but God's scriptures, you know, our apostolic traditions. Force yourself to accept forgiveness. Because I know a lot of you are gonna go. I just don't feel worry about worthy about God's forgiveness. I just don't feel right. I just 
I, you know, I, I don't know how this, could, you know, he could forgive me. All those things. You know, what? you're right. But then none of us is worthy of his, of his, of his grace. If we were worthy of his grace, we wouldn't need it. But God showed us his grace while we were still sinners. And you only know, read that in Romans 5, 8. But God shows us, clearly proves his own love for us by the fact that while we were sinners, Christ the Messiah, the anointed one, died for us. Folks, he's seen us as worst, at our very worst. God has seen us and still loves us, still wants you to come home, still wants you to accept him. Christ has figured it all out, folks, and he's, and he's made the way for you. It's not about your righteousness. It's about the righteousness of Christ on your behalf. You know, we read in 2 Corinthians 5.21, for, your, for our sake, he has made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The price has been paid. You know, really, end of the story. The price has been paid. But it's for us to accept Christ's atonement. It's for us to accept and embrace God's forgiveness. Relax and enjoy what God has for us. In Romans 8 1, we read, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who were in Christ. We read in Romans 5 1 and 2, Therefore, since we have been justified by, justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through Him. We have also obtain access by faith to this grace in which we stand and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Folks, I know sometimes it's tough. You know, I know a lot of us have a lot to ask God's forgiveness for. We've made huge errors, made grave mistakes, but no sin that you've ever committed can't be forgiven by the grace of God. So to forgive others, that's a wonderful thing. To forgive yourself, that's a little harder. I understand. Folks, we're going into the second week of, week of Lent. Be happy. Be joyful. Hold on to the Lord with all you have. But always realize he's holding on to you too. Folks, those are my reflections. Hope you found them useful. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord hold you in the palm of his hand. Till we meet again.